Lagrange is where tur- Turn the Knobs came from, Bobby P. Oh, really? We got a venue there, and that's what the guy was saying? It, it, it was it was an outdoor fair. There's some kind of summer fair that y'all have. Like the county fair? Yeah. Um, y'all played this that? Was, I think, oh, my God. This was um, 2009. Really? Yeah. Huh. I don't know yeah. how I would not have known that. But I also haven't been to our county fair in, since I was 17. Or, or, or 2008. <laughs> or, I mean, it, it was very early. And, I mean, we were still in the Dodge pickup truck, the, the four-door pickup truck. So that was within the first two years of me, me playing. No shit. Yeah. Go Fayette County Fair. Oh, yeah, LaGrange. Cody oh. told me one time they used to drive around this Dodge van and uh, they had two front seats and in the back it didn't have any. And he would say, if if you had a left turn coming up, you, you just said to the left turn, the day of the brace. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just had a lawn chair set up. Oh. Lawn chairs? Yeah, we, we had, we had a serious? lawn chair. I swear to God. <laughs> That's fucking great. Had you strap them down at least or duct tape? Uh, no, huh? That's why we, we'd tell them when we were about to turn. That's why you had to give the <laughs> left turn signal, yeah. <laughs> there, there, was, there was actually a bench. So there was... Um, the, the two captain's chairs, and then there was a bench. So when we were rolling just four piece, it was cool. But when the, on the off chance we threw in a fiddle player or something, it was that fifth person that had to ride in the lawn chair. <laughs> so who, how did y'all decide who sat in the lawn chair? The one that, the, the fifth member. Really? <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. yeah. By the way, welcome to the band. You see that? That's, that's your seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> hey, but don't worry. It's got a drink holder. <laughs> no, that's actually, one of my favorite stories, man. We only had that thing about three weeks because the water pump went out in it. And uh, he got it for dirt cheap and sold it for the same amount. So he was like, screw it. But one trip there uh, it was a trip all the way up to missouri and we had a fifth member so there was a guy that was in that in that uh all the way to missouri all the way all the way to columbia missouri from fort worth oh jesus i bet that was a damn rodeo i I hope he didn't you know i hope the driver wasn't drinking at those times i can't hear nobody (laughs) My son's beating on the drums. Oh yeah. I've I've got I've got Nolan by myself today as well. So. Oh yeah, I don't know if y'all can hear Larson's beating the shit out of his drums. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you can hear, can hear yeah, it. Yeah, I hear it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, boys? I didn't realize I was late to the party. I thought I was early. Shit. Well, it got changed to. Hey, we're all buddy. We're just yeah. living in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> it ain't it ain't mine at all fuck i don't know what the fuck i'm doing usually oh uh, you see this hey homer you see this um you see this bitchin hairdo i got now look at this right i here. was literally just thinking last of the mohicans yeah i That's, this is a skullet this is what you call a skullet okay a skullet. it's got nothing up a skullet but huh you think about so is that. that like business all the way around, but I like to party just a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that That's... like like I'm married to kids, but I still like to have fun <laughs> shit? Like, is that what the, the skull it means? This much fun. That's, that's, this it. that's much fun. That's all that's, I got. That's all I got left. I'm, <laughs> I'm 40 this year. So this is all the fun that I can have. And it's all. Yeah. Right, dwindling. Just yeah. all, yeah. Well, it's it's fucking getting bald everywhere else. So you know, 
but he's hey, gonna you, he, he's gonna end up with one badass rat tail one day. <laughs> you gotta braid that shit if you're gonna do it right. <laughs> gotta braid it. If you're gonna, gonna do the rat tail, go hard. Just just a braided rat tail is what I'm gonna end That's, up with. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> dude, it's good. You wear a hat. I mean, yeah, like ninety percent. I'm the same way. I just cut my hair. Who gives a shit? You wear a hat all the time. That's it. Well, and that's kind of my thing, man. You know, it's it's like I, I you know, when I'm on stage, I'm dude, I'm behind a hat and sunglasses. Glasses. And no, nobody can really see how stupid I actually really look. Right. It's, it's um. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to wear a hat for a living, and you know, it, if you're out, su- you're in sunglasses. You can hide your own ugly really good. Well, and then, <laughs> well, and that's in, like in this business. There's, there's, uh, you're called a hat act, um, and and that's kind of a thing. You know, it's 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 just like any other business. You know, it's like okay, you know, well, you know, he's a he's a pitcher. What's he got? Well, he's got he's got a two seam, a four seam, a cutter, a slider, and you know, whatever. It's like, well, uh-huh. you, you know, it's, this guy's this guy's a hat act. Oh, and, I was thinking, uh, have y'all ever seen that movie League of Their Own? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I thought you were referring to like Marla Hooch, you know, <laughs> who was like really <laughs> oh. good. Oh, yeah, there's Marla and she zoomed there's, way the hell out. Ma- you know? <laughs> well, That's Mar- what I thought Marla you were kind of talking about. Well, yeah, because Marla wasn't the prettiest <laughs> girl on the team. Some would and, say, and, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, um, and I'm they, I'm deaf. I'm not the prettiest girl on the team either. And so they, they zoom out, put a hat on me and sunglasses. Like, oh, okay, he looks better. Well, I, I, I seen I seen it last night, and they were saying uh, like they were telling all the girls what was wrong with him, and she's like, "What do you suggest?" She goes, "A lot of night games." <laughs> <laughs> You literally watched that last night. I did. It was on. Yeah, yeah. I even <laughs> took a I even took a picture. I'll show you. It's oh a it's goodness. a great it's a it's a great movie it's a great movie oh I love that, that movie that's so, my favorite uh, scene right there when he's she's like can I bring him on road trips oh when she's br- wanting to bring her son on the road trips <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man and, and, very well, underrated and look, baseball movie yeah oh it's a it's fantastic man and act and people don't realize you know Penny Marshall uh, <laughs> directed that um, that movie and you know Penny was uh she's passed away since but she was laverne off of laverne and shirley and, and went on to have uh an extraordinary um you know producing career and accomplished right yeah a very very accomplished you know she played such a ditz on tv but she was she was very very talented uh actor director and all that good stuff but yeah just a, a fantastic movie i think when it comes to like i guess art those people get so left out, man. I mean, could you really think of an entire movie script? Now, granted, I have no writing artistic ability whatsoever. Um, you obviously write songs. So now try doing that to a whole script. I'm, I'm working on it, actually. I, and um, later today, actually, we're, we're, we're going to have Earl Brown on. And Earl's best known for uh, playing Dan uh, Doherty in Deadwood. Um and great show. we have yeah we have we have him on um next and he actually does write um he writes produces acts all that kind of stuff i'm working on a screenplay right now it's a western um based off the character uh for the song fast hand i've been working on the screenplay for uh three years and i've got about five minutes that's about it. That's, that's it's so, how many lines is that, or how many like sheets of paper? It, it, in 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 terms of dialogue, it's actually yeah, yeah. Sev- it's it's several. It's that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it, you know, five minutes is actually several. Uh, what I guess you what you would consider, uh, you know, just notebook sized papers of dialogue or computer sized papers. It's incredibly difficult. It's it's a completely different beast. If I were to sit down and just you know, if, if you were to sit, you know, say, Cody, can you write me a, a song about a tree? I could write you a song about a tree. I could go into what the tree's seen and the, the storms that it's seen. And there's a crack here from a lightning strike in 48. There's a, uh, you know, a mark from a tire swing on this tree. I can make a tree tell a story. Mm-hmm. Writing a screenplay, tough. That's tough. I can only imagine. Yeah, it's, it's So, funny. okay, so now that you've like broken your, broken the cherry on your, can I say that? Can I reference shit like that on this thing? You can say whatever the fuck you want. 
what, whatever you want to do, man. This is your show. The F bombs. All right, cool. So now that now that you've like busted loose with your screenplay, who's the dude that you envision playing the lead part? That's a super super good question. And to be honest with you, I don't know um, because I actually I, I, I have a part for myself in the uh, in the screenplay, and what I'm what the part that I have written in for myself. I want to um, kind of be the comedic relief. Like uh, there's the, there's like the, the lead guy, which is the fast hand guy. Uh-huh. Um, and then he, he kind of has his, uh, his, his partner, but he's really not his partner. He's kind of more the, uh, the dumbass that rides around with him. That's going to be me. Um, as far as like the lead role, you have to get a super badass to to like. Yeah. You have to get like a Clint Eastwood or a John Wayne type of figure to like really be effective in a western. You know, um, you know. So who's the John Wayne or Clint Eastwood of I, this time? I I don't I got, know. I got one. Yeah, I I don't know, man. You know, any ideas? We better get to be extras in there. I, I tell you, I tell you what, man. The, the, I can't remember his name. I think his name is Cole. Uh, the guy that plays Rip, if you're Cole watching Houser. Yellow, Cole, if you're watching Yellowstone, the Cole, guy who plays yeah. Rip, that's a. I don't want to mess with that son of a bitch. Well, and and I I know Cole. I met I met Cole years ago. Um, he came to see me play at the White Elephant, not White Elephant at the uh, at Adairs. Um, Cole Hauser and, um, oh my gosh, let's see, they were shooting they were shooting a a, a show that got canceled after its oh, first that's right it was um cole and um kelly giddish there you go kelly cole and kelly giddish were filming a show down here in texas and uh unfortunately it got canceled anyway it's my cole hauser story we we got to uh we got to drink some beers and and uh they were actually going to try to get some of my stuff on uh on that show and uh then it got canceled so you know that shit so happen. that's who that's who we're going with. Cole yeah, Houser. we'll go with Cole Hauser. Cole, yeah, I, I like yeah. that. That's good. Yeah, Cole's for Cole's the time being. Well, currently, he has the role until you think of somebody else. Until we have somebody else. But Cole yeah. came up the other day because we were talking with we were talking with Randy. We were talking with mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Bloomer, and uh, he was talking because he was in um, an episode of Yellowstone, and uh, we he was talking about Cole. So, <clears throat> yeah, man, small world. We, awesome. we better get to be extras in this movie. Okay, yeah, dude, I'll write you in. Yeah, I just want to be an extra standing around. Me and Homer are doing something. I don't know. I, look, dude, I, I can't sit here and talk about my acting ability. So maybe I could play dead in a cowboy movie. Who knows? Yeah, we we'll just stand there. You know? so. <laughs> <laughs> just one of the bystanders who got shot. Just he, laying he there. shot in the I first shootout. Out. <laughs> just get shot in the first shootout, and then you're done. You know, that's that's even too much pressure. I got to act like the bullet hit me. <laughs> It's I just a, want to be the like the bystander, the guy you really didn't pay attention to, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see him laying on the ground, like, oh yeah, that guy got shot too. Oh you know? poor guy, why why they even put him in the movie? Oh goodness, hey Cody, yeah, what's up? We should start the yeah. show. We should start the show. <laughs> why? Yeah, oh we, shit, so, how we haven't been recording? That would have been like no, we've been recording. recording. Oh, we've been it's, recording. It's, it's, okay. recording. Yeah. it's always, it, it, dude. It is always recording. But this is this is the show that starts before the show actually starts, and uh, we'll go ahead yeah. and start it now. The green room. Uh, the, yes, this is the Green yeah. Room Show. You are listening to a couple in with Cody Jinks from Boyd, Texas, on remote. We have Josh Thompson. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys. It's Friday. I feel like I've put in a good week of work. I'm excited. Yeah, cool story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't win. <laughs> uh, out of Waco, Texas, we got Bobby Keith Kilgore. Are you engineering today? Uh, I think I think so. I was turned over to the host today, so I'm excited to uh, try something new. Well, good. It's time you start doing something. <laughs> I know. And um, Seth knows 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 worthy. Uh, <laughs> normally turning the knobs uh, out of Nashville, Tennessee. I see his face right there, but he is not live. I don't know where he's at. But as long as we're rolling and rocking and uh, we're doing good, and today we have a longtime friend of the band and uh, just all around pretty good dude. Um, 
We have Homer Bailey with us. How you doing, man? Good, man. We're I'm a little north of you. I'm in Minnesota right now. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be happy for that. Yeah, they called it hot at 84 the other day. I was just like, okay, <laughs> good one. <laughs> 84. I wish we had, we get down to 84 because you're a Texas boy. So we get down at 84 yes. like at night. Maybe. I would say it's at least yeah. two or three in the morning. Most of the years. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but you know, Minnesota's a, uh, and, and you're, you're obviously up there with the, with the twins this year. Minnesota yep. though. Um, I love Minnesota. I love, uh, people don't realize how country it is up there. Um, but we started playing Minnesota years and years ago. We were basically doing the I 35 tour. We would just go from Laredo, Texas to, to Minneapolis. And that was really our route. The, the Midwest was kind of our first gateway before we went to the East Coast, before we went to the West Coast. Um, they've always been really, really good to us up there. And, uh, um, we've been going up there. Uh, there's times we were pulling more people in Minneapolis than we were pulling in Houston, Texas. But the cool thing about uh, Minneapolis, we've played in Minneapolis when it was like negative 10 and we've played, Ooh. we've played in Minnesota when it was over a hundred. So, you really do kind of get all the seasons up there, but I got to say right now, probably uh, Minnesota, Twin Cities area is is more comfortable than it is down in Texas right now. Yeah, I don't envy you one bit. To me, it's yeah. like the weather. I feel like, oh man, I need to be deer hunting. It's like, well, no, 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 wait. We still got a ways to go here. Yeah, you know. So, it's, it's are you tricky. are you get you getting ready for hunting season? I don't know that I ever really stop. Yeah, that's, you know, we all have our guilty pleasure addictions, right? So, uh, yeah, but I'm actually, we have deer like come in the backyard and I'm putting corn out and stuff like that. Not that I'm going <laughs> to shoot any of them, but, you know, used to, I always just like kind of looking at them like, oh, deer, you know, so they're, yeah, here we go. Well, they're majestic beings anyway, and they're just fun to watch wh- whether wh- whether you're shooting them or not. Yeah, I mean, as long as I can keep my dog from chasing them off around here or something, then, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll be fine. I'm just spectating. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But no, you're right about uh, the Minnesota area. I, mean, I can see how y'all be popular up here. There's like, you get people who don't think of this area, like you said, that would really like country stuff, but you get outside these big cities. And yeah, I could see it. I could see why they would. I mean, I went to a bow shop and was talking with a guy about shooting bows and team roping and, and all kinds of stuff. So I don't think it's not close by. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and, you know, the, the caboose up there, um, in Minneapolis is probably one of my favorite clubs to play. We, you know, I, I remember we started playing, it holds about a thousand people and we started playing that club whenever we were getting 150, 200 in there and until we got up to a thousand people there. And, you know, now we're playing, what, what do we play? The Armory? Armory yeah. was the last spot. Armory was, was the last. That was a cool spot. Last place, you know, which holds like five thousand people, something like that. But uh, yeah, man, we've played damn near every every uh, every venue in the in the area up there, as far as Twin Cities area. But uh, uh-huh. man, let's up. Uh, <clears throat> well, hold on, I have one quick question because oh, you have a question. What, that this is yeah, yeah, I have, have a question. Sorry, I'm butting in. Uh, take over here. So before you got on, the guys were telling me about this Dodge van, literally right before you got on. So mm-hmm. what I want to know is, did you go all the way up to Minnesota in the Dodge van with a fifth member in the lawn chair in the back of the van? <laughs> go. <laughs> um, I don't know that that van actually made it to Minnesota. It never made that, it that far north. No, it made it to Columbia. Remember, to, we got to Columbia. Columbia. We, did a, we, okay. did a, we did a Midwest run. In that yeah. van, we we got up to Missouri, so we got about halfway. But yeah, we actually had this uh, this Dodge Ram van that had um, it had almost two hundred thousand miles on it when we bought it. But I got it for thirty five hundred dollars, and we had my neighbor and I took. He was a concert cellist or something. He he had a giant like cello yeah like a cello yeah okay and and or something something big like that uh but it was it was him his driver so they had like a little bed made in it and a, a place for two of his instruments and um whenever i bought it it was rigged out um accordingly so my neighbor and i um got in with a bunch of drills and had to take all of this shelving and 
whatever out of it. So whenever we got all that out, it was left with the two captain's chairs up front and then um, one bench and then nothing. And so we didn't have any money to put um, <clears throat> proper uh, seating <laughs> in. So we just put some lawn chairs in there and uh th- it wasn't bad riding in the lawn chairs as long as you knew when you were turning. That, that That's was, what they were saying. <laughs> that, you know, you, you, left turn. If you, if you knew you were going to make a left, you know, you put your hands out, you know, <laughs> and just grab a wall on, on both sides if you can. Because <laughs> the lawn, lawn chair was going to dump your ass, man. That, you know, it wasn't, it, it, you know, it, it wasn't a matter so there's of there's no like duct it. tape or anything holding them down. We could we couldn't afford <clears throat> uh, the duct tape to uh, actually properly secure the chair to the floor. So gotcha. good good times in that van. That van broke uh, broke down on us one time. Whenever Josh's little brother, who at the time was playing football for TCU, was uh, he was with us. And he thought it was the funnest thing being out on the road and breaking down and you know like really living the rock and roll lifestyle. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> blessings to the old van. Cause I actually, I sold the van for as much. I got my money back. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't lose any money other than uh cost of, of repair and uh, whatnot. Cool. So, you know, here's, here's cheers to the, to the Dodge van, van, right? Cheers to the <laughs> yeah. old Dodge Ram van <laughs> and triple a, because uh, we broke down in that van uh, about 85 miles outside of Fort Worth on our way home from a West Texas run. And we had just gotten triple a and, uh, that bill would have been $800 to get that van back to my house, which it was not because we had just gotten triple a that first triple a bill paid for, uh, the f- next eight years of triple a. It was awesome. <laughs> God bless triple a $800. I didn't have to spend to get that fucking van home. Cause it might've just stayed on the side of the road. That son of a bitch might have got lit on fire and left. I don't, you know. <laughs> you told the driver, look, man, if you can get us back home, you can have the damn van. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it somewhere, light it on fire, and leave it. <laughs> oh man! Oh, all right. Wow. Well, well we're, all, we're we're obviously we're goofing off here. We we've uh, we've known Homer for a long time, um, and one of the funny things about Homer is that Homer is uh is is obviously a major league uh baseball pitcher and the first thing he said to my son whenever he met my son was he said uh he said I'm Homer and my son's like your name's Homer and he said that's a bad name for a pitcher and and you know and obviously you know Homer said that's a bad name for a pitcher you got Homer from your grandfather right great grandfather great grandfather right. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he. Yeah, would, I know. He was, I had no like say in the deal, right? So, yeah, you know, I've had it since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I was tiny, you know. I've always been called Homer. So, as as my good fortune would have it, my profession would be a baseball pitcher. Worked out really well, didn't it? Yeah, the whole name did it. <laughs> it worked worked out well. Come so, to terms. Yeah, after not, a while, you just kind of come to terms with it. But uh, your God given name is. Uh, is is David and but nobody right. calls you David. Uh, you've right. you've always you've always been home. No, in fact, I, I probably if if somebody says it, like I don't even yeah. react to it because that's my dad's name, and so I don't react to you know like me yeah. calling you Bobby. You're <laughs> probably not going to turn your head. Well, I don't associate it yeah. with you know my name. Okay, so um, you know you're you're Texas boy. You're you're originally from uh, the Lagrange area. Uh, you were drafted by the Cincinnati Reds in the first round of 2004. I think so. Yeah, four. <laughs> Has it been? That it was. Long? It was 2004. It was 2004. First round. Uh, gosh, you were you were way up there. You were six, seven, eight, somewhere around there. I, I can't remember. I think seven. Okay. Um, yeah. And then called uh, to the majors in 07. And at the time, you were the youngest player in the National League, right? That's cool. Yeah, I think so. I, I I don't I don't know. I don't really listen to what's being said about myself and stuff like that. But yeah. I think so. I believe you're correct. Yeah, I was pretty young. I think I was only like 21 and maybe a month or two. Um, and I only remember that is because I had my 21st birthday 
when I was in AAA and we happened to be in Canada. And so I was all excited for my 21st birthday and no one there gave a shit because the drinking age is 19. <laughs> so you can see, you know, you can see like when you have a first name of Homer, you become a major league pitcher, you end up turning, you're American, you turn 21 in Canada where the drinking age is 19. You know, there some similarities seem to keep happening here. You know? Yeah, so it, it, was, it was just, it was pretty lackluster, I guess. Man. They didn't give a shit. They didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> Oh man. Um, gosh, you, okay. So my math is awful. Uh, this is your 14th season. What What are you 16th? <clears throat> yeah. Since I was seven, but those, you know, first couple of years as a young guy, you get sent up and down. So I think my service time, I think I'll break 12 years this year, 12 or 13 years, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we obviously got to know you, uh, when you were pitching for Cincinnati and yeah. we got to go to that ballpark. Um, gosh, it's been several years ago, Keith or Josh. Yeah, we went on? before we uh, actually got to meet him, though. I think yeah. it's been really? four years because mm-hmm. that, that yeah. was four years ago, I believe. We played you were at, playing, uh, you were playing in Newport, probably. That's right. We, House? W- we walked across the bridge and went to we the did. game that Sunday on Father's Day. And all got those mugs. Remember? <laughs> That's right. I don't remember the mugs. <laughs> they gave us the little cups for Father's Day. Really, but I, well, I do. I do remember that because yeah, we were playing uh, the the Southgate <laughs> Revival House. Yeah, that's a cool and, place. Oh, what a cool venue, man! You know, it's it's well, the downstairs know, is cool. The, the downstairs, downstairs is what what cool. The upstairs is just a pain in the ass because it's three venues. People don't realize it's three venues in in one venue, and the 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 main, which was the worship hall, it was, it's an old church. Um, the main room holds five or six hundred people and then there's uh two smaller rooms um there's uh let's see there's a room that holds a couple hundred and then there's another room that um holds like a hundred hundred and fifty or whatever and i think over the years we played two uh, or all of i can't remember we we definitely bounced around but um yeah I i'm really surprised i never saw i never like went to that if we were in town that y'all were there because i saw a lot of really good bands play there um, yeah. either the ones that are kind of either just starting or you may see a guy that's, uh, still to- like, I think one time I saw James McMurtry who, you know, I like James McMurtry's music and, uh, so I got to see a guy like him there. And so that place has always had some really good shows, sneaky, sneaky. Good I like how you, yeah, I like how you say that. You they you either get the up and comers or the guys that have been great forever and <laughs> for a long time. They know. Been, yeah. yeah. yeah you're, you're exactly right. That's the perfect place for that kind of show. Is, is it the Southgate house? And, and they bring a lot of them in during the year. So, I mean, that's, that's like a sneaky, really good place to go see good music. I miss playing there. Um, we really did. We, we had some, some super, I think super they take cool. you back. Y- y- well, you know, I think, they, I think they, you got a shot at this, at this point, man, I'd, I'd like to go set up in somebody's living room and play. <laughs> I, I, I just, I just want to go play, man. It's, that's kind of what, is so weird about this deal is that um, this is the the longest we've ever had off. Um, right. You know, we we quit playing at the beginning of March. Uh, we had a week and a half off. We literally flew on March 11th, which is kind of the the day everything shut down. We flew to New York to start a tour. Um, the buses were up there. Everything was set and ready to go. And we turned around and flew home the next day. So. You know, we're we're in month six of um, you know a bunch of road dogs not being able to do anything. <laughs> so it's 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 been uh, strange. So yeah, I would I would like to just you know, can I just come to your house and play? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what are you I'm what, good with it? You, yeah. you leaving town? You're leaving. But you're leaving today. I right? tell you what, I look, dude. I'll give you thirty bucks if you do it. How's that? There's that thirty. Like, bucks? 30? <laughs> I like, haven't, <laughs> I haven't made I haven't made thirty dollars for playing in six months, so I, I'll take it. <laughs> there you, go. you got you got beer there and beer. How's that? Thirty yeah. bucks in beer. You drive a hard bargain, all right? Boy. And maybe a sandwich. That's all I'm gonna ask for. That's I used to I'll have even a, cook. I'll, yeah, I'll cook <laughs> something. How's that? <laughs> we used to have a writer that had you know two cases of beer, two cases of whiskey, a snack tray, a deli tray. Uh, catered food and all this, but now I'm playing for thirty dollars beer and a ham sandwich. It's things change, don't they? Times are tough. Well, you know, you know, I guess 
God. I guess you've played enough. I can I'll allow it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what like what have y'all what have y'all I mean y'all had y'all haven't had this much time off. What do you do? You're so used to to travel. I mean we went through the same thing. So what do you how do you fill your time now? Well, Kids? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. I was about to say, well, I am actually uh Road dog Larson. <laughs> well, I, I and I don't know that I've told the guys this yet. Uh, I have decided. I know what you're not doing. You're not decorating your walls compared to these guys. <laughs> you're, you're right. I'm not decorating. <laughs> you look at Keith. He's got shit all over the place. Let me tell you, I, I do not have my own place on the inside of my house. Oh, okay. I, I don't have my own spot inside. <clears throat> I, uh, I have the outside. So, but. Which I've been doing a lot of outside upkeep during this time. That's my main thing. But I'm actually going to uh, coach flag football. My son. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take that endeavor on. Since we have the time, never thought I'd be able to do that. So I thought, while we've got it, let's let's do it. That's awesome, man. You going with the short athletic shorts, the whistle, Please. the whole <laughs> yard? Oh, you Let's bet. How, how hard are we going here? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, there's definitely going to be. Uh, you whistles. guys are in Texas, bro. I, I know how the, the football, youth football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and we're going flag. Like I said, this is five on five. You know, we're going to pull up some good schemes. I want a lot of motion in my offense because, you know, you have to have some deception. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, these are, this is 10 you. These kids can catch and throw now. So we're going to have to play a little mix of man zone. Uh, it, it, zone on the back end, man on the front. So, yeah. Do I sound so, smart? You, are you going to be solid. that, that you're going to be that <laughs> asshole, aren't you? You're gonna, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to be that guy. So you're asking, should I be a playing music or a uh, coaching football? I think I should be playing music, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to give a hand at coaching. Yeah. Well, so well, at least you got something to fill your time. I don't know. What have you been doing, Keith? Man, I've just been staying home because there's nothing to do. Like every time you want to go somewhere, you gotta wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't have a beard to flip in my face like you do. Like yeah. in your picture yesterday, and I, I said, "Man, it. we we pick up our groceries, we come home." And my daughter's been gone to Louisiana for a uh, like vacation, so we just stay home and every now and then go out to eat. But you just pick it up to go because I'm not going in. Yeah, I really haven't no. done anything. You know, I, I guess, you know, Homer, none of us really are, are doing a whole lot. You know, we've, we've, we've been trying to figure out, um, how to stay busy. Um, you know, as, as people that are constantly on the move, you know, in, you know, much like, you know, baseball players have the most, really the, the most hectic, uh, schedule of, of, of really any sport that I've seen. So, you know, you can relate to, um, you know, if you're, if you're doing 162 games a year, you're on the road 200 plus days a year, plus checking into spring training training. and doing all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys are, you guys are, are, are gone all the time. Um, so it's been very, it's been difficult for us, you know, and I've, I've, I've said this before, you know, some days, you know, I take it and I look at it as, as like, um, you know, I'm really going to use this time to, uh, to work on my writing. I'm going to use this time to, to improve, to, you know, do this or this or this. And that day, that sounds like a great idea where, you know, I'm just going to better myself. And and, and the next day I will wake up going, what the fuck am I going to do today? (laughs) You know, it's, it's very, um, it's been really, (laughs) it's been really, really weird. Um, but you know, luckily we had, we had started this, uh, this podcast back in December and, um, we were, we've been able to get it going again. We've, I think, I think this is our 20th, uh, our 20th episode. We started dropping on, uh, this week. And, um, so we have kind of a cool mixture of old ones and new ones. We're going to do an old one, a new one, an old one, a new one, an old one, a new one, you know, until we get caught up with where we're at. Um, but, you know, focusing on this has been a lot of fun. And, you know, over the years we've, we've, um, become friends with a lot of guys like yourself and, and, you know, uh, actors, singer, songwriters, athletes, uh, you know, bi- just business owners that we've gotten to know, like, like Mr. Bloomer, um, you know, th- doing what we can. I, we've been writing a lot. Um, you, you know, me and, uh, uh, me and 
the guys that I typically write with, uh, I, I, we've got another record ready to go in terms of brand new material. There's the songs are there. It, we just, we were actually going to go in and start recording at the end of this month, but that got put on the back burner as well. Um, just because kind of the uptick and, and the virus and everything that's, that's happening with that. Again, we thought when we planned this a few months ago that we kind of had this stuff taken care of, but, but, but evidently not. Um, so yeah, just try not to pull what little hair I have out left, you know, <laughs> well, I guess you just can't reach the part in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this is the part of the day I look forward to because like you said yesterday, you know, you, you do this and you think like, man, what am I going to do the rest of the day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, it, it's funny cause you know, when, whenever you're on the road, you know, you're out there, you know, our work day is, is, um, uh, you know, we, we get into a place and, and the band and crew start at about, uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, moving around, working, setting stuff up. And it's an all day thing until the point to where, you know, you're done with the show. It's 12, one, two o'clock in the morning. And then you get on the bus and, uh, and you leave. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've had our sense of normalcy taken out, but, um, that's just kind of, kind of how it goes with what we do. Now, you guys, on the other hand, uh, in the athletic world, um, man, tell us about what you guys are doing as far as protocol. Um, how's it working, man? Well, I probably need to throw a disclaimer, get most of them right. Cause I kind of forget them every now and then we're getting tested every other day. And then I think one time we hit, because we just got done playing in between that where they actually had to do the nasal. So stay, Use your hand disinfectants and stuff like that. Just try to stay clean as you can. Don't go out after games or, you know, try to do your part. Yeah. 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 You <laughs> fixed we it. feel better. Do I got to go through all that again? Uh, basically, uh, I, th- I think what you said is y'all are getting a, basically a test every other day. Is, is, is that what's yeah. going on right now? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you like know, I and, said, and, you just kind of do your part, right? I mean, wear your mask. You know, when you're around a bunch of people, when you're traveling, you know, you don't need to be going out after games or going to get lunch, you know, maybe have something delivered, um, sanitizing the hands, stuff like that. I mean, except for a couple of numbskulls, which is going to happen in anything like this, no yes. matter what profession it is. You know, I kind of feel like now that you're three weeks into it, feels pretty good as opposed to when the season first started and, and the confidence of it, of it ending. I feel pretty confident that, that you guys can get this thing finished up. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't see any reason why we can't. To be yeah. honest with you, um, like I said, as long as as long as everybody's kind of, uh, you know, just have some common sense, you know. And, and then I guess the other thing is just be a little selfless and remember that even though if you don't have the fear of getting it or you think you know you would you would beat the virus, but you're also playing with thirty five other guys in in one big space, right? So we're kind of crowded in there together in. You consider your staff, your training staff, um, all the guys who you travel with, like be a little considerate because if you get it and you spread it to somebody else and then it just goes around the, the clubhouse, you know, we're all, we're all quarantined. You know, we can't come and do our jobs. We, you know, this is a team that, that we're going to try to make a playoff run. Like, Hey, if we start missing a bunch of guys, we just diminish the greater goal, you know, and, and that should kind of be your forefront thought. Yeah, it, it you know once once it got started up again, you know us like everybody else was like, God, thank you, we have baseball again, mm-hmm. you know, and then you know you get ten games in, and the thing ha- you have the flare up with the Marlins, yep, and then you're thinking, oh, geez, you know, we just got this going, and this might stop. You know, but it's, uh, it seems like everybody's, you know, got a handle back on it and, and everything's, uh, everything's moving right along, man. So, you know, thank God we have baseball to watch. I, I have been watching or listening to more baseball than I have ever listened to or watched in my life because we have, we were so starved, you know, for sports just in just, the content, you know, whatever, whatever. My son is a big, um, he's a big Dodgers fan. And 
So last night I let him stay up. You know, the mm-hmm. Dodgers, Dodgers and Padres played last night and the D- Dodgers beat the crap out of them, but it was still a ball game. It was the last game on and we, and he sat in my office with me. I was, I was prepping for, t- for today, listening to the game. And he, he just sat on the couch in my office and just listened to the Dodgers, you know, and just like, ah, oh, finally, you know, and, and now we're looking at, you know, the, the collegiate level, you know, you have, I think, um, the Big 12 has said they're going to keep going, but you know you have some of the other big conferences that are saying we're not gonna we're not gonna go. So I don't I don't know, man. You know it, it's just a weird deal. Yeah, and I wonder what that means for the the schools in general. You know, I mean, obviously their athletics program, especially football, obviously uh, pulling a lot of revenue for those schools for even those towns. So, I mean, you know, you if you're driving through Austin on a on a Saturday. And they're playing at home. It's a different vibe. A lot of people come into town, you know. So I wonder, I wonder how big of an effect that's really going to create. Oh, it's, I think it's going to be, it's going to be huge. I mean, Austin, I think you can uh, say can survive, but a place like Stillwater or College Mm -hmm. Station, you know, those are those true, true Lubbock. You know, those are just towns in here in Texas. Those are those true or or Oklahoma true, uh, you know, small college towns that that's where. It's like it's like a vacation town. I mean, that's where they get their mm-hmm. stuff. And if there's no tourists, there's no kids, or you know, games. I think it's I think it's going to be tough. And I think the repercussions of this um, are going to be long lasting. And we're really not going to see it, you know, for five or six more years to to really really understand how big of an effect this thing is taking. And not only that, Josh, you know, to hit on that point, um, like. Right now would be in well in the last one we did we we uh, we talked with uh, with Coach Rod the uh, Steve Rodriguez the head coach for Baylor. Um, right now you know he has eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one year old baseball players that have idle hands and are you know it's like what do you do when you're a college aged kid. And let's say you're on a full ride. There's so many uncertainties there. Does does that go away? Like I would be sweating that if I was a college kid, you know, like yeah. there's no people coming. We can't afford, we can't play games. You know, do I lose my scholarship? I don't know what, what's going to happen there. Yeah. I think in all the student body, even if you're not in athletics, all of a sudden colleges are shut down. Like, wait a second, what do I do? Where do I go? Uh, you know, you're probably used to either living in a dorm or an apartment or something like, wow, what, okay, do I just go home, get a job? Or if you can get a job, that's pretty tough right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you definitely see the effects that this thing's had on everybody. One way or the other, you were probably affected by it, even if, you know, you didn't know somebody who got sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a weird deal, man. Um, but let's get back to baseball. Because that is what you do. Yes, please. That's yeah. You. That's and everybody talks about COVID. You know enough. Yeah. Well, you know, in 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 the COVID thing that affects obviously what you do. It affects what we do. But um, if you don't know who Homer Bailey is, uh, Homer and our band. You know, we got to know each other a um, couple, three, four years ago, somewhere then thereabouts. Homer Bailey is one of. Um, Gosh, I think there's only been 34 or 35 pitchers in the in the major league with multiple no hitters, uh, and you are in that category. You have two no hitters. Um, one of only five acting. Five acting. Yes. Okay. Five act. Yeah. yeah act. Act. Acting. Are you acting? Or are you active? <laughs> no. <there's- laughs> Sometimes I'm pretending out there. I don't know. You might want to call that acting. <laughs> I think I think pitchers are probably the best actors on the on the field, to be honest. By with you. far. Yeah. It's, I think there is so much psychology in because it, if you're the pitcher, I think your job and my job are a lot the same. I feel like, you know, you're kind of the front man. And, you know, it's my job to to walk up there and and think that I am going I'm gonna I'm gonna blow this right past you at 98 miles an hour. I'm just going to throw it right down the pipe and you're not going to be able to hit it. That's what I have to do for a living. 
you know, the, the, right. the mentality is the same. And, and it seems that we talk to more pitchers, uh, than we, than we do anybody else. And I, I think it's because, uh, you guys are, are more on, uh, that I'm not going to say you guys are smarter. Um, uh, it's, it's just the game psychologically that you have to, that you have to play as a pitcher. It's very much like being a front man. Um, I have to walk out every night and, and think that tonight I could throw a no hitter. Um, but the stat that I saw that was super cool was, uh, you were the first one since Nolan Ryan to finish and start a no hitter. Is it? So is have that right? like back to back, back to back. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, that's good company to be in, right? He, yeah. he was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> he was all right. <laughs> he was all right for, for an old guy that threw yeah. no hitters in three different decades. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, but yeah. let's, that's let's, um, I guess. let's go, let's go back to, um, when did you know, um, was there a plan B or did you just, you just, came out and started throwing rockets. I mean, but when, when was it like, okay, I can make a living out of this? Probably the day I got drafted, you know? Well, I mean, I, I always progressed pretty well as a, as a teenager and stuff. And I knew I had a chance to get drafted pretty high. Um, at the time, you know, when I was getting drafted, I was, I was still in my high school season. So I knew that the draft would just work out the way it's going to work out. You know, I, I can't pay attention to it because we, we were, you know, you're playing with your, friends that you've grown up with your entire life and you know you're kind of enjoying that your your last year before you are thinking about what you're going to do as an individual going further um but you know at that age no there was no plan b because like you said i got drafted out of high school i was 18 and it's like well if you're thinking about a plan b then you don't have a chance at making plan a work you know what i mean like if you're not putting your your focus and your energy just into that, you're already, you've already lost. You know? <laughs> I'm sure that you can say the same thing as a, as a musician, as a, as a front man with your, your deal. If, if you were even thinking about plan B, if that thought of well, what am I going to do if this doesn't work? No, this doesn't work is not an option. I'm going to yeah. do this. You know, I, I need to be, I need to be in this to, to do it. Um, so no, I, as far as plan B, I was never really given that option or never thought of it as an, option. how's that? Yeah, no, you know, it, very, very similar. We, you know, doing what yeah. we do, it's, it's, um, it's really the same thing. You, there, there is no plan B. <laughs> there is no plan B. Like, I'm going to see this thing until it crashes. This is, you yeah, know? there are side hustles. There are side hustles, but there's no plan B. Yeah, side hustles, but no plan. Yeah, you might do what you got to do, but this is the plan. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, well, it's you know very very similar, and and, and I found that, that most of the people that we talk to, and and you know we we've, we've been fortunate to you know get to know a lot of ball players, um, you know, like yourself, and uh, that's kind of and I like to ask that question because that's really most people's answer. It's like <laughs> no. They're, no, there wasn't anything else I was going to be doing. You know, it was kind of, right. you know, if, if I, um, if I wasn't doing this for a living, I, I more than likely would be a police officer. Cause when I was a kid, I wanted to be a police officer. I didn't know that I could grow up and be a, you know, for quote unquote, a rock star. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was like, well, that's a kind of, that's a cool thing. You know, after you get old enough to realize what you're going to do, thank God I'm not a cop now. Oh man, God. What a, you know, what a, in, in such a, a respectable field, but just, uh, you know, hard, uh, a hard job right now. But yeah, after, um, I, after I realized music was going to take me in a different, uh, a different direction, you know, there, there wasn't really any, uh, any other way about it, man. You know? Now, do you see that it's the same with a lot of maybe musicians that you've played with or write with, do they kind of have that same type mentality? Yeah. Um, I think the success, successful ones. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. successful ones, it's, it's kind of like what you said, you know, um, if, if you just, if you just go all out and you're like, you're a, you're a ball player. Okay. When you retire, right. you're still going to be a ball player when you're just, that's what you are. 
um, you didn't mean to be, you were, you have natural talents that took you in that direct. If I could throw 95 miles an hour, I'd probably be a ball player. Um, but I can't, I can, I can write a song. So, you know, the guys that I know that I'm really good friends with, you know, kind of in our circle and, and you know, some of these guys, you know, Ward Davis and, and Whitey Morgan and Tennessee Jet mm-hmm. and Sonny Sweeney and Josh Morningstar. And I could go on and on, uh, you know, about my friends. Um, they are successful because it's just what they do. You know, it's, it's, uh, right. You know, if, if I was making $30 to come to your house to play for beer and a ham sandwich, believe me, I've made less, you know, I would, I would still be, oh, I would the offer's still, still on the table. Yeah. I haven't, got that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone down in my price. Yeah. Okay. It's still 30. Yeah. yeah. Don't be dogging me now, <laughs> no. but you know, uh, if, right. it, if I was, if I was still making $30 <laughs> beer and a ham sandwich, that's, that's, I'd still be doing it in, you know, if you were making $30 beer and a ham sandwich, you'd still be throwing a baseball. It's just because what you do. And I think that that's kind of what separates the people that are successful from the people that have plan B. Um, there's a lot of talent out there. You know, you don't really realize that. And, and I'm sure you came from probably a small place and a uh, small town ish. And then, how many musicians have you run into that you go, wow, that guy's insanely talented. <laughs> you know, um, I have a, I have a good friend of mine named Sam Anderson and he and David Matzler formed a band called the Quaker city Nighthawks uh, 10, 10 ish years ago, somewhere around there. Sam and I grew up together and to have two, it would be much like um, you growing up with some, a, a friend of yours and both of you make it to the bigs. That's crazy. You know, it was, you know, we grew up together and we both ended up being in, in bands that I guess, quote unquote, you know, made it or whatever. And, and the rarity that that is to have a childhood right. friend, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It, it's, uh, you know, it, it's kind of an anomaly. It, it doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen very often like that, but you know, it happens from time to time. Did you have any circumstances, you know, did you, did when you were coming up, play in high school or whatever level play against somebody and then see them again in the majors? Oh yeah, absolutely. Believe it or not. Um, but that time that your travel ball was really starting to pick up. So even as a high schooler, I was able to play in, in uh, multiple States. So you'd go to Florida and you'd play teams from Florida. You'd go to California and you may play teams from California or, you know, there were some really big, I guess you could almost call them showcasey type tournaments. Um, that the team out of Houston I was playing with would go and play in. And so you saw a lot of guys from all over the country uh, that they were talking about being higher picks and stuff like that. So, yeah, believe it or not, I've actually played with quite a few guys that I remember playing against as a teenager, you know, and 10, 15 years later, those guys, you know, there's a few of them that are still doing it and you got to see them along uh, all of our career paths, I guess you could say from the other side. But it is a small world in terms of of, of the number of um, people that make it to that level. Um, it's really it, it's it's oh, it's yeah. a small small percentage. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a one in a million shot. You know, kind of kind of like what we do. We almost may need to have him back because I have one more thing about baseball that I spent a lot of time on this. All right, and go I, for it. I want to present this. So I started thinking last night, Homer, have you ever thought about how many miles you have actually thrown the ball? No, okay, but you're you're going to go off of just pitching, like pitches thrown. Yeah, so so I, because those are the only true numbers I I have. So I okay, have done okay. the work for you of how many miles you have thrown in a in a major league game. That's a good would anybody like to throw out numbers before I uh, I do this? Over, over 264,546. Okay. 254,000 miles is what you're going with? No, no, I'm just, I was going to say like 80? I have no idea. It's a lot of pitches, bro. <laughs> 10? I don't know. I just threw out the... Okay, so, so here's what I found. I found that 87.2 pitches equals a mile. So... We're going to go with 87 pitches because you have a couple of throws over to first, yada, 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 in a game. So 87 yeah, pitches get you, get, you, yeah. get you a mile. 
All right. Okay. You have to date thrown 23,375 pitches in a major league game, which is a grand total of 268 miles <laughs> That's it? that wow. you have thrown. But <laughs> I have decided that you have got to have thrown the, the, the length of the state of Texas between – Spring training, minor league. That's only Bullpen that's six hundred miles. Everything. That's six hundred miles total, east to west. You're I would all, I would say that's accurate. So multiply that by like three. Yeah, and 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 you're in there. You go maybe so, four. I, but let you guys know, every time you hit eighty-seven pitches, you have thrown a mile. <laughs> that's cool. I I, I mean, like, I wouldn't have thought to do that leg work. I'm going to remember that forever. I'm going to look up and see someone's pitch count. It's going to say 87 pitches. I'll be like, dude, it's on a mile today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From now on, it's stuck. There you go. 87 that's, pitches is a mile. <laughs> that's, that's interesting, amazing. Josh. And you've thrown 268 it. miles so far. And, and that's, that's just in game situations. That's just in, that's just in major league pitches that have been recorded. Wow. You know what? Those are pretty good miles for a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, man. Not, Not bad, bad for a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I I know we need to get this thing wrapped up. We, I mean, because gosh, dude, you've been on the bus with us, and we've just sat there and gambled, and and you, me and you and my son have gambled together in the band, and we <laughs> had, and my son still likes to talk about uh, gambling with Mister Homer, uh, Road you know, Dog. Play, Play the road dog. Yeah. <laughs> Play <laughs> Larson, the road dog. But, you know, we uh, actually, me and Larson played uh, AC Ducey right before I jumped on this. He was like, yeah, let's play AC Ducey. And we play for imaginary money when we're at home. But he likes to remind me that the night that you were on the bus with us, he won $190. <laughs> so you were obviously losing or you were winning. That's why you were a little behind. Yeah. Were you winning? You're trying to snake your kids a night. <laughs> <laughs> Generic money? <laughs> you didn't want to leave? No, I got a hot hand right now. I got to take this Monopoly money back. <laughs> I got it. Well, and I don't play him for real money. The little sucker counts faster than I do, and he he can count cards. It's insane. I, <laughs> he's uh, he's a natural. But um, before before we wrap this up, man, let me – and I like to ask this uh, just just to most people in your, uh, your situation. Um. Who in your career have you faced that every time he comes up to the plate, you know you got his number? And on the flip side of that coin, whenever the next person walks up, you're thinking, God, this guy hits me every stinking time. Who are those guys? Okay, so the ones that come to mind are actually retired now. Um. So the one who I could always get out at a, at a strangely alarming rate was Andre Ethier. Um, and he was a very, very good player. I don't know how that always worked out, but he yeah. did. Um, yeah. And then the one who always seemed to hit me, I've got two of them, and it is Adrian Gonzalez or Ricky Weeks. For whatever reason, like, didn't matter what the hell I Ricky threw him. Ricky Weeks. Just, Ricky Weeks, strangely enough, right? Wow. So that guy for sure, I think, I feel like, I don't know, that I know they have stat cast and I could be proven wrong, but I feel like that guy probably hit the hardest ball off of me I ever saw. I mean, it was hit so hard, I feel like, because it went to left center at Miller Park, and it was on such a line drive and still got out. I swear our shortstop went down thinking he might be able to jump up to catch it. <laughs> and then he kind of went down and then never really popped back up because it was past him and he realized he couldn't catch it. And the ball still went out of left center. And I'm like, that ball was hit hard. Oh, like, my goodness. I don't know what that one was. Or do not throw that again. So um, cool. I may have already been on my third. Do not throw that again with that guy. So it <laughs> didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there's nothing you can do. It just ain't no, it's just, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um, Probably like now, an amp making funny noise. You just kind of get used to it. Like, all right, get on, get on with it. You know, well, there's, things yeah, not over. 
Sure. You absolutely. Know? You know, there's little things that, that you have to overcome and, um, you know, it's like screwing up the same part of the same song every night. You know, I can't yeah, get this absolutely. guy out. I don't know what to do. I mean, everything, <laughs> everything I'm doing sucks. I don't know, man. Oh man. Um, I think now we got a little bit of kind of like one. Now nah, I got see almost 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. 20, we'll we'll 20, sit here and 30 minutes. Yeah. We'll, We'll wrap and, and uh, goof off a little bit. I hate, I hate um, to talk about Hemingway. Turn, we talk about Hemingway all day, dude. Old Man of the Sea is one of my favorites. <laughs> well, I hate it we couldn't get him up to the house because remember we had scheduled him to come up. And then yeah. the thing happened. Because yeah. you're you supposed to go to Stephenville, and I said, well, why don't you just come up? Yeah, yeah. And then I think uh, y'all, y'all went into quarantine because Hot Rod got uh, COVID or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we did, man. Um, you know, because – when we we like I said, I don't early, know if we, he's supposed to know that, so maybe we'll beep it or something. Oh, uh, it, 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 it's he's all right. I mean, he's, yeah, that was months ago. Months and he's months ago. he's good. He's still feeling some of the repercussions of it, man. He's still having like some. He has do inhalers and you know that's it's shit's bad, man. You know uh, our our bus driver, uh, our bus driver's wife, Nino. You know Nino. Our, our bus driver's wife got it, and you know she still got a, a cough and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's. Yeah, it's been weird, but yeah, you were supposed to come up and um, and do the show with us uh, up here, and uh, yeah, COVID. Well, to yeah, I was gonna that. go see uh, one of my mare had her baby like a week before that, so I was gonna go up there and see her, and then go go to your place, and then I think a bunch of storms and stuff ended up coming in, so I didn't I didn't even make it up to go see that. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we started a. Uh, I asked, you know, that, that that was kind of my question. I love finding out, you know, uh, who, who you get the best of, who gets the best of you. Um, but we've started a new segment. And do we know what we're going to call this? Josh this got guys? a name for it. You got a name for it now, Josh? An appropriate name. Yeah. It's, like, uh, like yeah. So, so it's called Why Do I Know This? Why do I know this? Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's okay. That's a, that's a good. You know, uh, so it's going to be like when somebody brings your name up and they're listening. Years down the road, I'll be like, why do I know this about Homer? It's going to be because of this, right? Here. That's, that's just what I need. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> All right. So these, these, these are the, uh, these are the really hard hitting questions, Homer. And if, if any of them make you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to answer. Okay. Okay. All right, boys. Here we go. Um, I'm glad that that is there like a, you need a rip cord. I'm at a loss on this thing. Oh, we get. <laughs> I think he just need. He, he, see, there he, he doesn't. Every doesn't time we do it, he doesn't want to get into it. something good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Honey okay. rent gets cut off, and then this gets cut off. <laughs> All right. Well, but no, now we got you. Okay. See, ever since Steve. J- Bob's died. These iPads are really going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's not there to do the quality control anymore. No, he's not. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, have you ever run a vehicle out of gas? And how many? If so, how many times? Twice. Can I explain? I would love to why hear why I ran out of gas. Yes. Okay. This it's not bad. I'm not. I'm not. Hundred percent idiot. It's because I have this 96 Ford, right? And it's a, a 7.3. So you have the two gas tanks. The only problem is, is that when you get to about a quarter tank left, you better be finding that gas station because that quarter mark actually means empty. And so it, it, like it finally took me a little while to realize that even though it says I have a quarter tank left, it really means you need to go find a gas station now. <laughs> so... Vehicle error. I have the exact same Ford, and I know your problems. And as soon as it starts to bounce, you better go. You better <laughs> go. But I have never ran one out of gas, so I win. Next question. <laughs> uh oh, hang on. <laughs> How did you win? Because I haven't ran a ran a vehicle out of gas ever. Ever. You probably live closer to a gas station than I do. <laughs> God, dude, I've run out of gas so many times. Thank you. Thank Never you. Had. I'm glad someone's on my side here. Like you Which said, is two. why I win. 
You said two, and I was like, I've run out of gas twice in the same day. I don't know. <laughs> How much gas did you put in on the first time? <laughs> uh, not enough, evidently. Yeah, you know I mean, because, you know, sometimes when you're like 19, 20, you ain't got no money, you pull in, you go, hey, give me $5 on three. You know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts? I don't know. You don't know. I, I, and I'm okay with that answer. I just, you know. Yeah. I want to see what you, okay. Um, and what is your favorite music venue? Ooh. My favorite one that I think I've ever been to, Moody Gardens in Austin is pretty good. Yeah, that I like that place. And then I went to the, it's like the Kentucky Opera House or something like that in Lexington. Do you, do you know okay, what I'm talking I don't know about? That I know of that one, Cody. <laughs> no. Um, I, saw, no. I saw Sturgill play there. We've never been to that one. Mm-mm. But I that already like the name. That one of was it. pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was a cool venue. Okay, very nice. And uh, last one from me: um, if you have the option, you've got an hour to sit down and eat something and just eat a lot of it. What is that item going to be? Oh, I got to go ribs on that one. Oh, good ribs. They're pretty hard to beat. Yep. Ooh, yep. I like ribs. Okay, that's. I'll accept that's your good. answer. That's good answer. That's that's yeah. solid. I like that. You have to accept it. There is no, I don't like that answer. This is just the answer I gave. <laughs> Your opinion is you wrong. Accept it. Is this, no. Do I get points? <laughs> is there a wrong, a wrong answer opinion. here? <laughs> well, I, I, I am the host of this game show, and there could be, but I, as I said, okay. that, I okay. like that I didn't one. know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, now uh, Bobby Keith, go ahead. All right. So I know you're not a video game person, so I'm not going to ask that one, but uh, morning person or night owl? Night owl. Uh, for sure. This, this vacation spot. Oh, home. Home is yep. pretty nice. I know that doesn't make a sense to a lot of people, but if you don't get to spend enough time at home, it becomes your vacation spot. <laughs> yeah, I would say one of my favorite vacation spots is going to your ranch every year. <laughs> it is your you, home. Can't, <laughs> you, you can't beat it. You can't beat it's it out it. there, man. It's, it's pretty hard to screw <laughs> that one up, too. That's yeah. Bobby Keith's favorite <laughs> vacation spot, too, is Homer's home. Dude, I look forward to that the thing every about year, it is, man. No one else can go. <laughs> oh, wait a second. That's not true. Invite's That's always awesome. open, guys. <laughs> I wish we could have brought the tour bus down there and did the tour bus podcast tour. Yeah, we oh, were going to do that. Ooh. But, you know, shit got weird again a couple months ago. So we were going to, we had been planning on just jumping on the tour bus and just packing up all the podcast equipment and going and hitting places and, and talking to people. But uh, I don't know if mine would have been very good. It, it, it could have been better than this one. <laughs> nah. Well, I, I mean, I could have been a lot more of an idiot if we were sitting around a fire. Um, Having a couple adult beverages, so. <laughs> well, we gotta have you on again. We well, we'll have to do it again for sure. But you know, that's we, we call the show a couple in for a reason. You know, normally, whenever we right. uh, whenever we do this, we're on the road, and it's usually on a show day um, with somebody that we know in a town we may be playing in, or uh, you know, somebody else in a, in a different band or or stuff like that. So normally, we are together, and we do have a couple of. Um, Adult beverages, but uh, understanding that you you have uh, to go to work later, right? You know, but uh, yeah, that kind of thing is typically frowned upon. If we if I showed the work up, well, a few I've in heard already. I've heard that, that some that, and I'm not going to name names. I've I've heard some pitchers tell me that uh, they they do better if they if they've got a little bit of a uh, maybe a cold beer or two. I don't know. And, you know, I was just trying yeah. to make a sense. I'm better than what we really are. <laughs> <laughs> you completely blew the cover. God yeah. dang it, Cody. But, yeah. Hey, uh, we'll let you go, man. I know that I know that you have to go to work. Um, you've been very gracious with your time. And uh, it, this has been a fun one, just, you know, more so because we've gotten to know you. We've become uh, friends, you know, over the past couple of years and all that good stuff. But, uh you know, thank you again for uh, joining us and uh, good luck in the rest of the season. Good health, um, all of those things. And uh, man, we'll go ahead and, and get it wrapped up. You're a couple in, Cody Jinks. 